on this beautiful Thursday and I have a special treat for you. You know, we've been talking a lot about what it takes to step into the next level of your destiny. We've been talking about what does it really take to love yourself and be bold enough to be your authentic self even when there's going to be people who may not like that you're suddenly bold and um, expressed. But it's time for that, you know? The world is really calling for all of us to be authentic. And I know authenticity has become such a buzzword, but it's true. We are being called to step into this next level of integrity and authenticity. And the interesting thing about that is for some people, it's kind of scary. Not just because, oh, you might have friends or loved ones that aren't happy that you're no longer in that codependent dance, but it might also be scary because you've had some past trauma. You might actually have legitimate reasons for previously playing small or hiding out or staying quiet. But the world is calling for all of us to heal those wounds and step up and help others heal as well. And there is someone that I want to bring to the show who is going to help us do just that. Hello to beautiful Lena. We have Lena tuning in from Denmark and the lovely Alexa who's in America and Yannick. So nice to have so many people from around the world. And I'm so glad that I get to see some of you in the coming couple of weeks in Denmark in mm -hmm. June. And some of you might even get on a plane and come with me to America because that's where I will be spending some time with my dear, beautiful friend, Karina Virginia. Some of you may have already seen her on the beautiful cover of a yoga journal. She wrote the foreword to my book, I Love You Me, and she's contributed stories in um, my other book, Magic and Miracles. And I have the good pleasure of teaching with Karina in America in July at 1440. We did it last year and we're doing it again. And I am, I consider it an honor and a privilege to, to know this woman and to call her my dear friend. So welcome to Liberate Your Authentic Self with my guest host today, the beautiful Karina Virginia. Oh, you're so magical. Thank you. <laughs> I also feel so grateful for your friendship, your sisterhood. So very grateful. I think we've both been blessed with this kinship. So it's lovely to be here and hello everybody. I send you my love and I'm putting a big pink light of energy around all of us right now as we connect. What's better than connecting? Gosh, we need to connect, yes. right? Yes, more than ever, I am feeling that need. Um, oh. I usually, I'm usually a hermit. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm kind of an ambivert. I like to go out and do my events and then come home. But right now, I think there's this magic in connection for us. Like I do this, too. Yeah. I know like, I'm longing for it. And I was just talking to a client of mine who was, who was away, um, and she was doing some, some teaching. Um, and she was away for a while, and she said things w that were bothering her before she went away were still there, but they weren't bothering her as much while she was away. Was it the place? Was it the food? Was it, and then we got to the point of recognizing, ah, was it the connection? Mm. When we're with people that we can relate to and we can be our authentic selves with, there's this confirmation of love and a confirmation of our own wholeness. And when we are feeling alone, our wounds are double triggered by our own mind games. Mm -hmm. And sometimes what we need so much is just to, to be around like-minded people, to hug people, to say, oh, you understand, or you've been there too, or I'm not alone, you're not alone. And you know, what does Buddha say? The greatest suffering is separation. Yeah. 
I think, you know, I've been coming to this conclusion just recently about shame as well, that I think mm-hmm. a lot a lot of shame is being healed right now and a lot of shame is being triggered to be healed. Yeah. And shame makes us feel like something's wrong with us. You know, guilt is that we feel that we did something wrong, but shame makes us feel like something is wrong with us. Yeah. So when we are if we are in shame or in the vibration of shame, which is the lowest of all frequencies, love being the highest, then we automatically consider ourselves separate Mm -hmm. because we feel different and we feel less than. So if separation is the root of all suffering, what is shame, right? So if we don't heal these wounds, these, these traumas, whether they're ours or they're from our ancestors, they could be energetic imprints. If we don't heal them, we are not going to be able to fully connect. That's right. Yes, you know what, I wanna, I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna jump in because it's been a few months since you and I connected, so I have to like pull so much out of you. So for those of you who who don't know, um, Karina Virginia is an empowerment guru. She is a Kundalini yoga master. And what I love about teaching with you, Karina, is that we get to go into the woo-woo neuroscience that I love and psychology, but you bring this ancient wisdom from Mm. the yogic tradition. And I really love, love, love how you um, help us understand the different layers of our quote-unquote bodies. Mm -hmm. Because this is a thing that I noticed as a medical doctor and an acupuncturist that when I was doing treatments with people in my Wellness Institute, I saw so many different cases of people as we were talking or doing acupuncture or doing trauma work, that doing some of the psychology stuff like um, wounded inner child dialogue and, and all these things, that there would come a moment where their physical body would react. And what I learned before even knowing that all of this magic existed for these ancient technologies. What I noticed just as a doctor was there's this memory in the body and it's almost like as they started to finally be willing to open up, be vulnerable, get the healing that they needed, the body would get tweaked or release or go through this sort of PTSD thing. And so I want you to just share a little bit about these different layers of our body and how trauma, even if we've been through talk therapy or psychotherapy, there is often this other energetic and physical layer that we have to to treat in order for us to connect with ourselves or anyone else. Absolutely. Yeah, I I love what you're saying because I've, I've talked to a few people just recently who've been saying that things have triggered them and they've started to shake. Yeah. And they say, why am I shaking just from this? You're not shaking just from this. Right. You're shaking from something in the past. And this thing that is happening to you is actually happening for you because it's helping you to activate that pain so it can dissolve. You've got to feel it to heal it, right? So sometimes that the, the nervous system will actually shake, and that is the nervous system. It's the, the sympathetic nervous system's going, oh, my gosh, something's been triggered. Um, yeah, I, it's it's... I'm still studying every day because I'm fascinated by these layers of healing and these different bodies. We have the subtle body, we have the aura, we have the auric um, field, we have the the um, arc lines, we have ancestors that um, ancestral healing that lives in in a field. We have, I mean, there's just all these different fields that that live outside of the physical body. And then in the physical body itself, we have the mind, we have the body, um, we have our breath. But what I've been studying a lot is, is from medical doctors that have studied these ancient techniques from India from thousands of years ago. So along with the Kundalini yoga that I practice, I've also been studying with some of these, these really um, genius, genius experts in the field of energy and how, just like you, they studied medicine first and then they noticed the medicine itself wasn't doing it, what's going on. And what some of these doctors have found is that 
we hold, and, and epigenetics is showing us this too, we hold imprints from our ancestors in our energy field. So we hold these imprints and then they become part of us because we're so much more than just this physical right. body, right? So I, I, when we were teaching last year, I remember we were talking about the wounds, turning the wounds into radiance. Yes. How do you use alchemy to create you know, when there's a dark spot in your auric field, how do you create the alchemy to create the spark of light from that? Well, you can. Um, we all can. And that's what's so exciting about this time and how science is catching up with this, with what ancient yogis knew for thousands of years. Yeah. But yeah. in these fields around our body, we have memories of our childhood, not only in the body, in these fields. We also have imprints from our ancestors um, we have, if we believe in past lives, we have imprints from past lives. We have all of these layers. And if we're just working on the physical body alone, and we're just working on overcoming the mind games or limiting beliefs alone, we are negating this entire field that is longing so much to be healed. So for many people, if they've done X, Y, Z, A, B, C, you know, and they're still saying, why am I still stuck? I highly recommend looking into what is going on in your field, not your mind only. You know, it's, it's change your mind, change your life, but you can't change your mind if you don't shift the alchemy and create this a beautiful force of light in your field first because it's stuck. Yeah. And that's what we see. I mean, it's it, you and I are always talking about being able to see, and you have these gifts of being able to see and hear um, other beings, angels, and such. And it is interesting that sometimes you can see someone who might have the perfect weight and they're dressed nicely, but you can see that there's either something in their eyes or their energy that's just not right. Mm -hmm. But I love that. What, what my work in, in the trauma world and what you're saying is that when we get to a point of really being in a safe space, I'll, I'll say that, I'm not advocating that people just go diving into their trauma. If yeah. you need a safe container with a therapist or a coach or yes. a healer, then yes. definitely get that. But yes. I love that as we, as we are willing to go into that space, we can actually reprogram the brain because if the brain is in this hyper aroused state, always looking for the next threat, then we're never fully present. Mm -hmm. And so this, this idea that you were sharing um, the last time that we taught, and I know we're gonna be teaching some of this again at 1440 this July, um, was this, this idea that you, I'm sorry, just hit my microphone. <laughs> this idea that you brought up just a, a minute ago, and that is that these wounds, these things that we would previously hide because of shame, feeling that we're, we're bad, we're wrong, we're dirty, we're whatever. If we could actually tune in and feel the pain, get it released, we will reconnect with our authentic self and that radiant light will go through those wounds to the outside world, yes. right? Yes, absolutely. And you know when you're with a girlfriend and you say, okay, I need to tell you what I did, you know, <laughs> and then, you're like, Confession. well, and you're so like, I can't believe I did this. And I really thought I would get over this pattern by now. And then all of a sudden your friend starts to laugh and your friend goes, well, wait till he tell you what I did. Right. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're like, you're both laughing and you're connecting. And what that is, is alchemy because mm -hmm. you're realizing I'm only human. Right. And, and wholeness what we're striving for all of us to be whole. That is not to be perfect because being perfect is probably one of the most separating forces, you know, that there is because it's impossible. Exactly. And we will never be able to forgive ourselves for our shortcomings. And we will always be in shame for the one thing that we did that we didn't think was as great as a 99% things that were magnificent, right? right? So the more that we come together in community to work on these things and the more we laugh and sometimes cry, the more that, that we're able to just see, wow, we are so similar. 
But the, the problem with this isolation that a lot of people are feeling and this loneliness that a lot of people are feeling is, is that they're, they're um, what I'm seeing in a lot of people is that there's a tendency to feel so alone that there's a need to grab something to heal the, the discomfort. So, mm. so, you know, many different forms of addiction, right? Let me grab this to heal this discomfort of feeling separate and numbing that separation. But if we can actually say, this is what I'm feeling, okay, maybe it's mine, maybe it's not mine, maybe it is, you know, through epigenetics and in my cells, maybe it is something in my auric field, maybe it is something that happened to me when I was six months old that I don't even remember. Whatever it is, I'm feeling it, and it's just been triggered, and now I'm really feeling it, so I'm going to pause with it, and I'm going to experience this pain right? Mm -hmm. And at times, it's going to feel as though we just can't, right? But I'm going to experience this pain, I'm going to call upon the divine angels, love, whatever is needed to help me. And again, doing this in a safe space with friends or with a therapist or with a professional is definitely extremely helpful. But I'm going to feel it. And whatever intensity that pain goes to, it goes to. But no matter what, pain always has to come down. It always has to subside. It can't stay there. But what happens is you experience it, and even if it does cause some shaking or some, some recalibration to the nervous system or a, a, a memory or you know an a, a, a imprint being triggered, it still has to dissipate. So you feel it, and then you heal it. And then what happens is you don't need to reach for that whatever it is that, that is, has become the habit, that has become the, the numbing agent. And there's you know, so many different ones that, that human beings use. Instead, there's an empowerment, mm -hmm. right? Instead of leaning on the, the crutch, there's an empowerment of actually being present with the feelings because they're there no matter what. And anytime we try to numb them, they just repeat themselves when we're not numb anymore. Exactly. And then they just get even worse. And if we're messing around with something that's going to mess our serotonin levels and our dopamine levels, and we're numbing that way, then we're just creating a vicious cycle. Yeah. And we have to, th we have to look at ourselves holistically in that way. Yes. Um, you know, we, you and I were talking a little while ago about something that you noticed, and that is people grieving. Now, I admit, everyone, I am an empath. I pick up on energies. I can feel when there is even just widespread panic, not just with one person, but I can tune into energies. And I couldn't stay in America for very long. I was back there. For those of you that don't know, I live in the south of France. And being back Beautiful, in America- Beautiful, lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's about self-preservation, right? <laughs> um, but no, sometimes I, um, I'm really tuned into it and I try to do all of my little auric cleansings and shields and whatnot. But this idea that you said of people grieving. Now, I, I know that when I tune into American energy, when I'm in, in the USA, I can sense there's this collective heaviness and there's multiple I different think. flavors of it. Yeah, but you've been I saying that you've been feeling the grief of others, that other people are going through a grieving process. Tell me about that. Yeah. Well, I'm an empath as well, so I feel things very deeply, just like you. Um, I believe that the, the grieving that is taking place is actually here as a healing. And that just like I was talking about before, we have to feel it to heal it. Yeah. This grief that many people are experiencing, some people don't even know why they're grieving, or some people are, are putting a label on the reason why I'm grieving is because of what happened to me X, Y, and Z, or because this person did this to me, or because I will never forgive, whatever. But grief is energetic. Hmm. So whether, if we need to heal grief, we're going to A, attract something that will create the grief for us to heal, right? Mm -hmm. Or old memories will come up. Or we're just feeling a sadness and a, and a longing and a, and a grief for humanity. Or we just look around at things that happen in the world or we watch the news and we feel grief. The thing is, I feel that there's an energetic component of, of tremendous grief that 
is coming to the surface so that we all can heal years and years and years of the imprint of grief. And, and mm -hmm. go ahead. I was just going to say, if anybody listening is feeling that grief, can you accept that it might not even be your grief? It might be that you are an empath. And some people say, what is an empath? An empath is someone who feels the energy and the emotions of other people. And it's, it's a very real, oh, yeah. it's a very real thing. Thank God they know about it now. Cause when I was a child, nobody talked about, Oh, you're an empath. Everyone just said, you're a weirdo. What? You're a weirdo. You know, like chill out right yeah. now, at least as an adult, I can, explain I need my X, Y, and Z because I, I have to shed some of this stuff, you know, and, and, and even in the mainstream world, I'm able to talk about it a lot more, um, that there's certain things I need to do to be able to purify um, my own energy field because I do have a, a very magnetic field when it comes to other people's stuff. Um, and that's just the truth of who I am. But I'm realizing that there's so many sensitive people in the world today that don't even recognize how sensitive they are mm -hmm. and are wondering, why am I feeling this way, right? Is it hormonal? Is it this? Is it that? Well, it could be a number of different things. But one thing that I find is often lacking is the, the component of energy and that it, it's no matter what else is going on, whether it's a circumstance or whether there is something, you know, a lot of people right now that I know are, are in perimenopause, right? That's a big change. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, right? Hormones. So, yeah. Hormones. Um, so the hormones, and then if you have a daughter who's also going through, like, different forms of hormones, that clash with mother-daughter, it's like, whoa, you know? It's but real. It's real. But what about what we were talking about in the beginning, this energetic field, right? How is that also contributing to everything? And what about, yeah, in America, there's a lot, there's a lot of grief in America. And there's also a lot of polarization in America right now. Um, now, obviously, we need polarization in life just for a battery to work. You need positive and negative, right? But this polarization is really separating. It's even separating families and it's separating friends that have been friends for years. And it's becoming very tribal. Mm -hmm. And connection again, right? We long for the tribe. That is in our, our, our genes, that's in our cells. Yeah. So yeah. we long for the tribe and then we find our tribe and then what happens is we, the tribes start to separate. And what needs to happen is this integration of the tribes. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. does that mean that everybody is one and everybody is love? No. It just means that there's great people in different tribes that really could heal by being together, by recognizing that even the difference of opinions, and this has been a big one for me, a very hard lesson for me, even the difference in opinions all come from somewhere. Hmm. As long as we're living through the heart and as long as our intention is to love and to help this planet heal, the... belief of how to get there can be different and people can still really unite in beautiful ways. I've had those experiences myself where I've had, I've been somewhere where I've talked to somebody that's had a very different opinion about something than I have. And I said, okay, I'm going to listen. I want to hear what you have to say. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to listen with a very open mind. And I have actually been able to feel tremendous compassion mm -hmm. and even understanding for where they're coming from. And the beauty of that for me is that it frees me and it frees me that, so that I don't need to react and I don't need to defend and I don't even need to defend my energy field. I actually allow it in and I'm actually able to say, okay, wow, that's really beautiful because what has hurt me the most um, in America with a lot of this polarization, especially politically, is that people that I really care about may have a different political view than me and there's a separation that occurs mm -hmm. and the politics should never come between the heart mm -hmm. ever so I think all this is coming up to be healed yeah I totally agree with that and I feel like what you just said about this connection and we don't have to agree on some with someone else's ideology but at least we can come together and try to find peaceful solutions that work for everyone because we really are one 
one whole family, even though there's all this tribalism going on. Yeah. So for those of you that might like to join us in California, we will be there July 21st through the 26th for the Inner Bliss Outer Glow Retreat with me and Karina Virginia uh, at 1440 Multiversity, which is a beautiful campus in the Redwoods of California, where we will be leading you on so many uh, experiential things besides Kundalini Yoga and breathing and meditation. You'll be able to be out in nature to, to get some of that cleansing going on. So I've just popped up the link if you'd like to um, get a ticket to come and experience that with us. I know you will be blessed. Yes. It's been so nice being with all of you. Really, really beautiful to be with, with each of you. And heart love and let's keep that pink bubble of light around us. And I'm glad you brought up this, this pink bubble of light because there are some of our very dear friends in uh, Denmark and a few I think in Norway and maybe even from America. Alexa Cavelli, I see that you're, you're coming. So here's something interesting and I, I think you and I talked about this last year as well, Karina. Um, in Denmark, when we talk about kind of the cultural stuff that's going on, um, the, nobody burns witches now, at least we don't think so, in Denmark. But there, there have been, um, at the summer solstice, there has been a, uh, a big celebration uh, of the solstice. But traditionally, back in the past, they would erect like, it's almost like Burning Man, you know, a straw or a wooden thing that represented a witch and was burned. Wow. And so even today, not today, but in June, for the summer solstice, people will get together and do these bonfires. Now, of course, no one is saying, hey, let's go to the witch burning ceremony. It's not talked about in that way. But when you think about the cultural, historical imprint of that, um, it just, it really struck me when I heard about this a couple of years ago. And so a group of us are getting together in Denmark um, in sort of a way of reclaiming the solstice oh, and dedicating uh, June 21st? it. June 21st? Yes, and dedicating wow, it to the light. Magical. Yes. It's wow. It's called Light Fest. Um, what is it called? Light Fest. Light Fest. Yes. With Charlotte that is so Banff beautiful. And uh, Gita Winter Graugard, some of our fellow authors. Um, and so many others, Ninette and Helena Philipson, so people that are in the book with you and me. Um, but it's really magical because we're going to actually consciously, because people will still have a holiday, there will be people all <laughs> over the country, not just in, in Denmark, but also in Sweden and, and Norway. But instead of just doing what everybody else is doing, um, these beautiful souls have consciously decided to have workshops around what it means to be tuned into the elements and what does it mean to be a light worker in this day and age and how beautiful isn't it that is so beautiful and in that ceremony please remind everybody that they are healing their ancestors from the pain of of those annual celebrations and the moments that that really triggered pain years and years and years because you know these traditions where do they come from and what what was represented years ago right we never know you know I mean history says certain things but we don't always know the extent of you know being burned at the stake yeah right yeah. and so also I'm going to ask all of you who are listening who are going there to find the courage to be the light because sometimes it's so scary to be the light when when you know that light can trigger people and can trigger right um, and it and and it light can also disrupt and some people like things to stay the same yeah. and when to when when a flashlight comes at some people and they're blinded they are not going to say, oh, that must have just been a sound I heard. They're going to say, that's the flashlight that's blinding me. Okay. And if you're holding the flashlight, then yes, you're going to be the one that receives the reaction from that person. And this is what's happening with a lot of people that are bringing a lot of light to this, to this world. There's an incredible resistance to it because it changes paradigms. And yeah. Right? 
So you guys are paradigm changers yeah. and you're fierce. So let the courage <laughs> of your fierce love come into it because what you're doing is so beautiful. And so many angels who have passed on will be right there with you. Yes. yes. And we have some furry angels as well because we'll be at Charlotte's farm. So we've oh, got... So in love with that. Yes. Ugh. And gongs and we'll be by a fjord. But I did I see on your Facebook as well, you're doing something in New York. I'm going to be in New Mexico. Oh, New I'll Mexico. be in New Mexico for summer solstice. Yeah, I'll be teaching with my dear friend, uh, Naringen Carr, who maybe we can get her to watch this. Hi, Naringen. If you do, I'm going to send it to you. Um, very, very dear, dear, dear friend who I hope you meet one day. Um, we'll be teaching there on, on the summer solstice. Oh, sweet. Which I well, go to New Mexico every summer solstice. It's going to be awesome because there's going to be just you know, so many of us tuned into the light and the healing and the purification. And I really see it as a reclaiming. It's also like affirming that in this lifetime, I am going to be bold. I am going to step into my role uh, yeah. as, as this torch bearer, this light worker that, that I truly am. It's much more painful to stay like this. Yeah. yeah. It really is. Even if we think this is safe, you know, it's like if we open the heart and we let the heart bloom, we're letting our soul soar. But if we close up and we just stay tight in that bud, how are we going to release the pain? And, and how are we living into our fulfillment? And if we're not living into our soul's blueprint for fulfillment, or we're not at least activating it, there's such a feeling of helpless, hopeless sadness. Because our souls are here for a purpose. And I think that's another reason why a lot of people that are, are using things to numb pain are also feeling very sad because there's it's taking time away from activating the, the, the purpose of this soul's evolution. And everybody that's born on this beautiful earth at this time is here at a cusp period where we are bringing in so much light. And that might sound so woo-woo to so many people, but it is the Aquarian age. We are, you know, the dawning of the age of Aquarius. So we're in it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you can't really get out of it. Once you start waking up, you know, you're not going back to sleep. It's not like red pill, blue pill. You can't like fake it. <laughs> no, yeah. no. Mm -mm. But there is support. I think a lot of people that are waking up to this, you know, new, a new way of spirituality, a new way of expanding into this, this universal love are, are finding a lot of comfort in being around people who have, have had their spiritual awakenings to be able to say, that's all part of it, sister. That's all part of it, brother. Yeah. It's okay. Let me give you a hug. Been there, <laughs> done that. <laughs> yes. It's all good. It is. It feels a little frightening. It's all good. Yeah. Well, the beautiful thing is that we are connected. We are connected around this planet. We can tune into the love and the compassion of other fierce uh, love warriors who are, you know, even doing things that we don't know about. You know, the prayers that are being sent up that we aren't even aware of. There yes. is this enormous amount of protection and support. And as you pointed out, there are angels around us always. Many. So many, so many. And, you know, for people who aren't really um, familiar with how to connect with an angel, what I like to say is go outside, ask for a message and see what comes, a dragonfly, a swan, a squirrel, a bird. Um, just And just take a look at whatever it is that appears and see what the message is. Mm. You know, the other morning, I'll tell you this really quickly, the other morning I was posting a picture of my daughter from her prom, and mm. I was like, oh, I can't believe my daughter's going off to college, she's a senior, and I put this post, this picture on Instagram, and it was, you know, I was really feeling so sentimental, looking at her as a child, and then her in her prom dress, and thinking, I just miss giving her a bath, and giving her her, you know, rice milk, and, and snuggling up in her cozy pajamas, <laughs> And I started to say, gosh, this is going to be really hard for me when she goes to college. And so I sat down to meditate and 
I looked out, and you can look on my Instagram because both the pictures are the last two pictures that are that are there. They're still up right now. Well, obviously they're still, up, but they're the last two. I looked out, and there was a fawn, right on my on the grass. Oh, right? I and did see the, that. You saw that. So sweet. And I just said, "Oh my gosh, mm. mother's love is eternal, and the mother always comes back, and the child always comes back." And it was such a message from beyond. Yeah. And it was so comforting. And I, I'm realizing as I'm saying this that it it happened also for me to share this with, with others to remind everybody of the beauty of nature mm -hmm. and the beauty of, of how animals show up or a wind will show up or a sunrise or another. I have a, a, a student whose husband had a heart attack. And she sent me a text last week telling me, and she had asked me to volunteer at the, the daisies, you know, the brownies group, where her daughter's one of the daisies. And I said, of course, I'll teach yoga to these kids. I'd love to do that. It's one of my favorite things to do. And I love volunteering with the kids. So um, I said, yeah, great. And we're, you know, I'll give you my phone number. You can text me. We'll set it all up. And then last week she said, please send me prayers. My husband, he had a heart attack. And she's, oh, my gosh, he's young. And what happened? It was a massive heart attack. Wow. Two days ago, I got a message from her, and she said, God is good. Prayers have been answered. And she said, our neighbor just sent this picture from their window into our backyard, and my husband just got home. And it was a picture of a rainbow. Oh, wow. I just got chills. How beautiful is that? Yeah. Right? I mean, you and I could talk for hours and hours and hours, but we can, we can continue this another time. Um, <laughs> Well, thank you for connecting with me, dear uh, one. And I am so looking forward to seeing you in July uh, at 1440. So, me too, me too. And, and I can't wait to see everybody. And I know that, as always, it's going to be the perfect group of people that come together and we'll have our family. Yeah. And if, if you're called to be there, just make it happen. And, and we look forward to meeting you. And I can't wait to see you. Love you so much. Much love to you. So my dear friends, there you have it. Just another little reminder that we are always tuned in to this field of love and healing. And I do hope that you will join us. Even if you can't be there in person, just know that you can tap into that field and, and be connected. So until we meet again, remember that you are a gift to the world. So share your presence with passion. Much love to you, dear friends, and I will see you again soon. Take good care.